Hello! Today I'm taking a look at the character of Selfie, who prevails as Final Fantasy VIII's ditzy, cutesy, secondary character, who often seeks to maintain a sense of optimism and camaraderie throughout the game events. She fits into a recurring convention of an upbeat party member, such as Prompto from 15 or Tidus from 10, but also has this certain naivety that comes from youthful females, such as Eco from 9 or Yuffie from 7. And to this end, Selfie divides opinion, because there's plenty of the fan base that don't suffer the boundless optimism angle gladly, and err more towards the brooding, sort of Vincent Valentine, Squall or Orin character. But for my part, I've long since come to appreciate the eclecticism of Final Fantasy's motley cast, and much like source material, such as Lord of the Rings, the intrigue, character development, and humour from these fellowship quests often comes from different personality types attempting to get along in close proximity and in a shared you know, goal. And in the case of Selfie, it's interesting to see her counter Squall's stoic pragmatism throughout the game, with suggestions such as blowing everything up with a rocket launcher. And beyond this, she does offer some interesting world-building insights, such as her proto-blogging on the Garden Festival website, which I'll touch on shortly. Now, Selfie is technically the second party member Squall encounters, and she's teased in the introduction to the game, where she bumps into Squall and suggests that he gives her a taller of Balam Garden. And much like Orin in Final Fantasy X and Shadow in Final Fantasy VI, she disappears again, only to join the party uh, at a slightly later date. On this note, and something I haven't previously mentioned before, is that each introductory FMV of the main party, from Quistis's stoic entrance to Zell's shadow boxing and Irving's cool guy relaxing with a butterfly thing, each of these introductory FMVs seems to communicate the surface level personality of the respective character. And for Selfie's part, she hovers at the precipice of a short slope at Dolly Tower before losing her footing and tumbling down, only to show her good spirits by pulling a funny face at the bottom. This optimistic nature defines her dialogue and approach to things throughout the game story, and moments such as arranging a musical concert to cheer up Squall, which makes for a pretty fun minigame, is wholly prompted by her desire to see everyone be happy and getting along. Now, as I've mentioned in previous character episodes, I've always felt that the orphan characters hide behind a facade that's at odds with their truest self and works to conceal their insecurities. And Selfie is an interesting one, because she has small moments, usually when she's alone, where she errs towards more melancholic and depressive episodes. And tellingly, we see her staring out of the train windows, you know, watching the world go by. And later, in perhaps the most trying moment for her character arc, we see her still trying to be cheerful at the graves in Trabia Garden, where her you know, former classmates have lost their lives. So, Selfie's subtle character arc comes in the form of Irvine and the romantic foil that he attempts to be for her. Despite going out of her way to bring everyone together, which is hallmarked by her efforts to integrate Squall and her leadership of the Garden Festival Committee, the idea of a true emotional connection with someone, particularly romantically, is evidently new and unsettling for her. Each of Irvine's advances sees her stuttering and unsure of how to react, and this goes beyond the fact he's managed to create a terrible reputation for himself, and likely owes more to the fact that, as an orphan, Selfie has never really had the opportunity to forge these close connections and formative relationships, or even observe how a conventional nuclear family or relationship works, which adds to the insecurities around Irvin's advances. By the end of the game, however, Selfie is seen to reconcile with her insecurity, you know, the basketball scene, for all its legacy of cringiness, was a turning point for several characters, with Selfie being among them, and she realises that she's never truly been alone. This sequence also begins to show the depth of Irvine, which allows him to become a more legitimate and understandable character. And by the end of the game, Selfie and Irvine have kind of rekindled this sort of weird, maniacal bond where we see them piloting the, the Ragnarok together, which is evidently strange, but quite loving. So, 
Despite the desperation undulating beneath her playful exterior, Selfie, for the most part, is a loyal and hyperactive character. And although this is not to everyone's tastes, one thing I've always loved about her is the slightly ruthless sense of humour that she has, often suggesting that they may maim, destroy, or otherwise blow things up as a means of a solution, even jokingly suggesting that they skin and wear a moomba in order to escape the Galbadian prison. And it's intricacies of the surrounding party, such as this, that makes me really appreciate and value you know, the central party of FF8 as characters. And while this game has suffered criticism for its you know, party in the past, owing to the focus on Squall and Renoa in the present, and Laguna in the past, of course, I think it certainly does it certainly does enough to make them distinctive and interesting personalities in their own right, and support the story and proceed through the game with. Now, before I wrap up on selfies, some comments made on some of my previous episodes have been quite interesting, and acute observations about how she's somewhat prophetic and prototypical of our social media immersed world today. Indeed, her name is coincidentally similar to the now widespread vernacular of selfie, or self-portrait photograph, and many cite her filming herself with video camera in the closing moments of the game as indicative of this future cultural phenomenon that we're living in today. And while I think this is an amusing observation, there is some substance to this idea of Selfie being a prototypical social media user, particularly if we look at her management of the Garden Festival Committee and frequent photographic and written logs on the Barlam Garden website. We can see she is the example of, you know, the quintessential blogger or vlogger, you know, dealing in this self-documentary explosion that would come down the line with the advent of blogging, YouTube, Instagram and a host of other platforms that are in use today. And while Selfie uses the medium in a less self-indulgent cult of personality way, and much more objectively to document her adventures and her pining after Sir Laguna, I think there's strong parallels to draw with the self-expression these outlets are used today, and, you know, how Selfie uses these mediums in, in Final Fantasy VIII. And digressing slightly, interestingly, I think Prompto in Final Fantasy XV is in many ways a spiritual successor to Selfie, because his desire to photograph everything, you know, and, and you know, capture these solitary moments has a similar self-affirmation documentary feel to it, which, you know, may well warrant a discussion another day. So that about wraps up my thoughts on Selfie. Um, a divisive secondary character to the Final Fantasy VIII party, and a strangely forward-thinking individual with regards to her relationship to social computing. So, what are your thoughts on Selfie? Drop a comment, start a conversation, and if you enjoyed the episode, please like and subscribe to keep updated with my latest posts.